Number 15, 1971 Canadian dollar in MS67 condition. This is the first year that the Canadian dollar was struck in copper nickel clad, as the mint completely removed the silver composition from Canadian dollar this year. According to Jaime Hernandez from PCGS, the 1971P Canadian dollar is common in most grades up to MS64 condition. In MS65, they become a bit difficult to find. In MS66 condition, they are now scarce with possibly 200 or less examples surviving in this grade. In MS67, they are very scarce and command strong premiums. This specimen, for example, was sold for $1,200. Number 14. The 2006 Lincoln cent in MS68 red condition is considered to be a high grade coin. However, in terms of rarity and value, it depends on few factors such as specific variety, mint mark, and overall demand from collectors. The majority of Lincoln cents from 2006 were produced in large quantities, so in general they are not considered rare. However, if your coin has any specific distinguishing features like pristine preservation and strike level, particular mint mark or known error, it could increase its desirability among collectors and potentially raise its value. This gem was sold for $3,319.88. Number 15. Number 13, 1942 Washington Quarter in PR68 condition, CEC proven superb gem. This is an exceptional example of the proof 1942 Washington Quarter. Both sides come with dustings of light sandy gold iridescence. The surfaces are uniformly mirrored in finish and with virtually pristine appearance. Impressive gem from a mintage of 21,123 coins. The 1942, the final proof in the series, struck prior to 1950. It was sold for $3,840. Number 12, 1964 Lincoln Sentinel MS67 Plus Red Condition. According to PCGS, the 1964D is common in circulated grades up to MS64. In MS66 conditions, they become scarce with possibly under a thousand available. In MS67, it's one of the tougher days from 1960s, especially from Denver Mint. Anything above that level is considered rarity and commands strong premiums. These plus designated gem ended up selling for $4,331.25 with buyer's fee. Number 11, 1932D Washington Quarter in MS64 condition. Another CEC approved superb gem. As fresh and attractive as one is likely to find for this key date Washington Quarter issue at the choice and circulated grade level. Dusted with light antique silver patina, both sides are sharply struck with a full endowment of frosty mint luster. A lovely coin that is eagerly awaiting inclusion in an advanced collection of this popular 20th century silver series. It fetched the sum of $5,040 at auction. Number 10, 1939 Jefferson Nickel was double die reverse, otherwise called doubled Monticello variety, graded in mean state 66 full steps by PCGS, a superior example of this popular double die reverse variety that would do justice to an advanced Jefferson Nickel set. Frosty surfaces present as brilliant most viewing angles, although direct lighting reveals subtle pastel shadings of gold, powder blue and pink. The prominent doubling to the word Monticello and denomination 5 cents confirms FS801 attribution for this 1939 nickel. It ended up selling for $6,900. Number 9. Here is 1951 Lincoln Cent in MS67 plus red condition. Exquisite specimen of this very common date. Also have a mintage of 284 million, a very few of them attain this MS67 grade with plus designation. Such pristine specimens command the significant premiums. This one ended up selling for $9,956.25 with buyer's fee. Number 8, 1957 proof Washington quarter in PR69 deep cameo condition. 
Particularly heavy frosting is evident on Washington's portrait, although both sides possess enough field to devise contrast to support the coveted deep cameo designation from PCGS. At the threshold of numismatic perfection, these brilliant and beautiful Ultra Gem ranks high in condition senses for this proof quarter issue. With a mintage of 1,247,952 pieces, it was sold for $11,400. Number 7, here is 1925S Buffalo Nickel in MS65 condition, intense satin to softly frosted mint frost, blends with iridescent gold toning on both sides of this exceptional 1925S nickel. The striking detail is superior than usually seen for this challenging issue. Both sides are boldly to sharply rendered with just a touch of trivial softness in isolated areas. The level of preservation is just as impressive, the surface is offering a silky smooth appearance and strong eye appeal. It fetched a sum of $14,400. Number 6, 1925S Lincoln Cent in MS64 Plus Red Condition. This impressive near gem is as well produced and carefully preserved as any 1925S cent that have handled in recent memory. The overall definition is quite sharp in fact, and the surfaces are of further note, giving the full endowment of bold rose orange luster that they possess. It was sold for $18,212.50. Number 5. This is 1951 Roosevelt Diamond in PR68 Plus Deep Cameo Condition. Spectacularly toned collector's item, only 57,500 proof sets were issued in 1951, the year after the Mint resumed its commercial proof set offerings. Few survivors have been seen with deep cameo contrast and coins in extremely high grade tend to have brilliant surfaces. This magnificent plus graded PR68 specimen displays vivid shades of burnt orange and cobalt blue toning over sharply detailed design elements and deeply reflective fields that contrast dramatically with the frosty devices. It was bargained for $18,800. Number 4, 1961 Franklin Half Dollar in PR67 cameo condition and with double die reverse. A virtually perfect specimen of this popular double die reverse variety. The surfaces are platinum white and sport outstanding field to device contrast of the kind rarely seen in examples of this Viva Stanton number. Both sides are without flaws beneath the glass. The 1961 double die reverse has a royal following not only for its scarcity but for the strong doubling on the reverse, most easily noticed in the Mota E Pluribus Unum. It is in fact the strongest known double die of Franklin series and per Rick Tomaska is a king of 20th century proof half dollar error varieties. It was sold for $22,800. Number 3, 1924S Lincoln Sand in MS65 red condition. Although the 1924S Lincoln Sand claims a large mintage of 11.6 million pieces, Few high-quality examples were saved by contemporary collectors, and the issue is one of the most challenging of the decade in a high grade. It is likely that the 1924S was not released into circulation until 1925, which might have caused the collectors to miss it when they updated their collections in 1924. The present coin is a delightful gem, with impeccably preserved original red surfaces and blazing mint luster on both sides. It was sold for $36,000. Number 2. 1968 Noah's Roosevelt Dime in PR69 condition. The 1968 Noah's Proof Dime takes third place among 100 greatest US modern coins by Scott Schechter and Jeff Garrett, where the authors write, any error in the manufacturer proof coin is not worth it because of its considerable amount of special care that is taken in their production. Indeed, proof coinage errors are rare across the board. Interestingly, the 1968 was the first year that the proofs were struck at San Francisco Mint. A small number, perhaps two dozen pieces, were struck from the die that had not been appropriately punched. 
with the S mint mark. The present example displays a band of golden orange color at the upper of verse, while the surfaces are otherwise brilliant. It was sold for $45,600. Number 1. And the most valuable coin of this episode, 1914, the Lincoln Cent in MS66 red condition, low mintage key representative. Although the 1909 SVDB is considered key date to the Lincoln Cent series, its conditional rarity falls far behind that of many other dates, particularly in the finer red grades. The 1914D stands out in this regard, confirming its key date status. This delightful premium gem representative exhibits vibrant satiny luster in dusky copper orange hues. The design elements exhibit razor sharp definitions throughout, and no mentionable surface flaws are evident. It was sold for $81,075 at auction. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit subscribe and bell buttons before you move to another video. Have a good one.